Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, continue talking about uh, theory of probabilities and in particular it's um, a little bit more formal description using, uh, <coughs> using the set theory and, uh, and the theory of measure. Um, I would like to remind just very very briefly um, the analogy which we have established before what we have done, we have uh, made um, the comparison between um, the sample space of the random experiment, which is basically all the results, all the outcomes of this um, experiments, all the elementary events, basically, with certain set. <coughs> Um, with every elementary event being an element of this of this set now every random event which is basically a combination of certain elementary events in this case would be a subset of this set and we are considering a situation when all the elementary events uh, are um, they, they have equal chance to occur which means that the concept of a probability can be actually interpreted as a measure uh, an additive measure established on every element so if we have n elements, then the, each element has a measure of 1 over n. Um, and it's additive in, in, in the sense that whenever we have any subset which contains certain number of elements, the measure of that subset is basically a sum of these elements. And if there are m elements which are uh, in the subset, then the probability or a measure allocated to this subset is m over n. So, the probability is an additive measure, and this is basically our model. We are using this language, actually, to translate something which is a little bit um, intuitive, like probability, and events, random events, etc. Um, we translated it into a little bit more formal language of the mathematics, which is using concepts of sets, elements of the sets, subsets, and, and the additive measure. This is mathematization, if, 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 if you wish, of, of more intuitive concept of a theory of probabilities. Now, I will actually move it further um, because I would like to introduce uh, the continuation of this um, modeling, of this equivalency. And um, right now I'm going to address the logical operations on the events like for instance we would like to know not just event A or event B but something like what's the probability of event A or B something like this so we have a logical operations now the operations I'm going to consider are or and in not so what's the probability of not having something or what's the probability of having something and something else so these are three major um, uh, topics which I would like to address right now. All right, so let's start with an operation OR. So we know this equivalency, all this modeling with the set theory. And let's consider a, a, a concrete example. Now, the one which I uh, have here is um, the following. Uh, let's consider the, the game of Krebs and uh, we would like to know the probability of having 7 or 11 on two dice. So, again, let's go to the probabilistic side of it. Now, what are the elementary events? What's our sample space? Well, it's basically uh, all the different results of uh, of, of rolling two dice, right? So, if we would like to get seven, then the dice number one, and this is dice number two. 
what we can have is um, 1, 6, 2, 5, 3, 4, 4, 3, 5, 2, and 6, 1. So we have six different pairs. Right? Now, if we would like to know what are the pairs which result in 11, then it's actually, I put it here, uh, 5, 6, or uh, 6, 5, right? So this is my result for 11. And we have two pairs. So all together, we count all the different pairs of two dice, which result in the uh, in something which we would like to consider as our good positive uh, event, seven or eleven. Well, there are six and two. There are eight pairs. Um, out of how many? Well, if uh, each dice has six different results, then two dice have six by six, which is 36. And that's what makes our probability to be equal to 8 over 36. 6 plus 2 is 8 over 36, which is 2 nines. Now I would like to address exactly the same problem from the set theory standpoint. So first of all, what I would like to do is I would like to um, model my sample space, right? So what is my sample space in mathematical viewpoint? Well, obviously the easiest way to represent this uh, sample space is as a set of all pairs where the first and the second are integer numbers from 1 to 6. So it's like 1, 6, or 2, 2, or 3, 5, etc., etc. So there are obviously 36 pairs. That represents my uh, set, which is a, a model of a sampling uh, space of my random experiment. All right, now, what we are interested right now is to get 7 or 11. So let's consider these two events separately. So I'm considering this positive result of rolling uh, a couple of dice uh, when the sum of 2 is equal to 7 or 11 as two individual events, 7, 11, and conditional between them is or. So what's the um, a subset of this set which represents 7. This subset contains one uh, 6 pair, 2 5 pair, 3 4 pair, 4 3 pair, 5 2 pair, and 6 one pair. So this is a subset of this set. Okay, now the sum equals to 11 is another subset, 6, 5 and 5, 6. These are two subsets of my set. Now, obviously the operation of union which is an operation of the set theory, we know how it operates. In these two cases, what is the union? Well, the union is obviously all these and all these, all together, eight different pairs out of 36, which makes the probability equals to 836, because each pair has a measure of 1 over 36, right? Each pair has a measure of 1 over 36, so eight pairs, eight different pairs, have the probability of 836. So it's exactly the same um, probability, obviously it's the same. What I would like to point out is our uh, modeling, our mapping, if you wish, of logical operation 
on the events, the purely probabilistic kind of a standpoint, and mathematical operation of union on two subsets of certain sets. So all we have to do is properly model our random experiment with its uh, sample space into this set of pairs uh, with numbers, integer numbers from 1 to 6 uh, each. Then our event uh, 7 on the top, on, on the sum of two uh, dice, is mapped into this subset of this set now, event that the two dice um, result in 11, if you sum them up, it maps into this subset of this set. And so the whole operation, the whole result of the operation of uh, operation OR, um, getting on the top of two dice 7 or 11, is mapped into a union of each individual um, uh, subset. So the OR, logical OR, between events corresponds to union between subsets which represent these events. Well this is a little bit easier case because these are all completely different um, pairs. What if these two um, models, these two subsets um, have something uh, common, have some common elements? Here is another example where everything works as well. So consider you have um, one dice and you are interested in divisible by two or three result. So same thing. If you have one dice, it's model in the set theory is obviously a set of numbers uh, from 1 to 6 integer numbers obviously, right? So we have six different elements in this set they represent our sample space of the experiment now the uh, logical operation 2 or 3, well let's do it separately. Um, what is the model of the event divisible by 2? Well, that's 2, 4, and 6 subset of our set of 6 elements. It's 3 elements. Now, what is um, the model of the event divisible by 3? Well, it's 3 and 6. Now, divisible by 2 or 3, well, let's get again back to the probability kind of case. What, what are the elementary events? Well, out of the elementary events which we have, divisible by 2 or 3, we have to cross out this and cross out this. Everything else is divisible either by 2 or by 3, right? So 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have four different elements uh, we have four, four different elementary events which satisfy this condition and so the probability should be 4 6, right? Which is 2 thirds. That's how it should be from the probabilistic standpoint. Now let's address it from the uh, uh, measure theory. Now we know that probability of this guy is equal to uh, 1 half, right? 3 out of 6, so it's 3 6. Probability of this is 1 third. We cannot add them up, like, as we did in the previous case, right? In the previous case, we just added up uh, two numbers, number of uh, 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 combinations, the pairs, which resulted in 7, and then uh, and the combinations which resulted in 11. They were all different, so we just added. We cannot add this because there is a common element 6. However, again, if we will apply a correct operation of union, back to the union between these two sets. So what's the union of 2, 4, uh, 6 and 3, 6? Well, the union is all um, elements which belong to either this or this. 2, 3, 4 and 6. This is a correct union between these two. 6 is supposed to be only once in the result. And that's why we have a correct probability of 
4 out of 6 because the number of elements in the union of these two is 4 although the sum of elements 3 and 2 is 5 actually but that's completely irrelevant in this particular case again the operation or logical operation or on events is supposed to be mapped into the union between the subsets which represent these events from the theory of prob uh, from the, from the set theory standpoint all right Now, let's move further. We have a next condition is end. I mean, probably by now you understand that everything is mapped quite well into the uh, operations on, on set theory. So, the end operation should be mapped to intersection. Right? Now, let's give an example. Uh, let's consider you would like to uh, again, roll the dice, and you are interested in the event that it's uh, divisible by 2 and 3. So the previous example was OR, now I'm talking about AND. So what's divisible by 2 and 3? Well, out of all these elementary events, divisible by 2 and 3 is only 6 right so we're supposed to get one six well let's just consider from the uh set, set theory, from the set theory uh standpoint divisible by two um again we are using the same uh, set of six numbers as our set numbers from one to six um every number is an element obviously and we're talking about subsets Divisible by 2 is a subset 2, 4, 6. Divisible by 3 is a subset 3, 6. And what's the intersection between these two? Well, the common element is only 1, which is 6. So the intersection is equal to 1 and only 1 uh, element, which is 6, exactly the same as in this case. Um, and the last operation I wanted to consider is operation NOT and obviously you understand that the operation NOT should be mapped to a complement which is a set difference or minus with uh, a subset. Now, what's the example? Um, example, for instance, not divisible by 3. Okay, so what's not divisible by 3 if you are rolling the dice? Again, these are divisible by 3. So that's what's left. 1, 2, 4, and 5. Well, let's consider um, the mapping of this onto the set of six numbers. And obviously I'm talking about the event divisible by 3. And divisible by 3 is a subset 3 and 6. And what's the complement of this? Well, the complement is a total set without 3 and 6. So what's left? Exactly the same thing as here. So my not operation on the uh, random events is modeled as a complement to a subset which is a uh, model of the event which we are negating all right so uh, my my main point actually of the entire this of this entire lecture is that 
all our intuitive uh, understanding of the theory of probabilities um, can very well be represented using the language of theory uh, of the set theory and, and the measure theory um, and there are a couple of requirements obviously so the measure is supposed to be additive um, the measure of every element of the set and we're talking about only finite cases <coughs> as you remember the measure of each element um, in the previous lectures we were introducing the equal chances or not equal chances so equal measure of the um, elements or not equal doesn't really matter as long as every subset of the set is measured as a sum of measures of all the elements which comprise this particular subset and another requirement is that the measure of the entire set is supposed to be equal to one because that's kind of a probabilistic uh, approach we have to model the frequency right so the frequency of an entire um, uh, results of uh, all the different results from the random experiment the frequency of occurring is basically one obviously because it's always something which occurs so these are you know few requirements um, but basically the whole probability theory is just a, a part of mathematics if you approach it from the set theory and, and measure theory standpoint with a couple of requirements to make this theory of probability a particular case of set theory and, and, and measure theory uh, so both these concepts the concept of a set and the concept of an additive measure um, applied to um, uh, to this theory basically gives you um, a complete picture of the theory of probability and that's why the theory of probability is a mathematical theory it's not just some kind of um, you know, half intuitive, half precise, half uh, um, I don't know, logical and half illogical and have some guessing and um, predictions and stuff like this. All these concepts are much less mathematical than the set theory and the measure theory. So that was my point to show you that this is actually a precise and mathematical um, uh, subject if approached from this particular way. Uh, I recommend you to read the concepts which I'm talking about uh, uh, today on the unisor.com. There are notes to this particular lecture. So if you read it again, it might actually better um, uh, provide you better understanding of, of this mathematical concept, mathematical approach to, to theory of probabilities. Well, that's it for today. Thank you very much and good luck.